our speaker for today is Abushet Abushek Bakusetti. Um, can you share your screen, Abushek? It is not on the full screen mode yet. I'm sorry, <laughs> I was talking with mute. Uh, can you see my full screen? Uh, yes, but it is not at, it's not full screen right now. It's not in the presentation mode, I think. Okay. Uh, let me check. I'm sorry about that. Let me give it a try. Uh, how about now? Yes, now we see the full screen. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, so, um, so I'll be quickly talking about uh, data pedal C++ as a heterogeneous programming model. Uh, and hopefully this is a quick talk uh, for, the, for today. Uh, so I'll be mostly talking about SQL as a programming model for heterogeneous uh, uh, programming, uh, mostly targeting accelerators. So SQL has been uh, a new programming uh, model uh, that gained quite a familiarity uh, in the recent years uh, and several hardware vendors are adopting it. Uh, so I'll be talking about the compilers, the programming model and its familiarity with CUDA and other uh, programming models. So uh, this is a chart uh, developed by the Kronos Group. Uh, Kronos Group is the one that, uh, uh, that manages uh, the, the the specifications for OpenCL and other and others uh, uh, and SQL is one of them uh, and it is trademarked uh, with Kronos. Uh, so the, the the goal of SQL programming model is to use C plus plus as a single source uh, uh, model for heterogeneous programming, so that one does not write code for accelerators separately and and for the host separately. So the, the goal is just to have a single source code that would just work for both CPUs and any accelerators that are attached to it. Um, as you can see uh, from the top down, uh, there are several C++ libraries like 1MPL that you've heard in the morning. Uh, and there are several SQL based uh, BLAS, Eigen, uh, DNN, uh, uh, Parallel STL. So these are all the, the libraries that use SQL as a programming model with single C++ source code, both targeting host and accelerators at the same time. Uh, it, it gently boils down to uh, the single C++ source code and at the middle, uh, you just have C++ template library which generates uh, the code separate for the host and the accelerator device code, which in turn is consumed by the internal CPU compiler uh, x86 or or the SQL compiler for generating the device code. Uh, and this is, this is all the backend. Uh, but uh, SQL is mostly developed with the idea, uh, idea that it accelerates larger C++ based uh, uh, engines and applications with the main goal of performance portability. Uh, as you can see on the SQL uh, compiler side of things, you have OpenCL, uh, which is uh, which is a GP GPU programming model. So uh, yes, uh, the SQL compiler can generate code based on the OpenCL standards and and would uh, run on a specific device. So OpenCL is one of the backends that SQL compiler would generate, and there are other many other backends that would be. Uh, uh, 
specific uh, for the hard uh, hardware vendor. So that that's the that's the overarching goal of what Circle as a programming model does for the heterogeneous uh, uh, heterogeneous systems. Uh, moving forward, um, so as I said, Kronos Group is the one that uh, has uh, that maintains the, the the Circle and its standards, and the main goal is to use Circle uh, as an open industry standard, uh, which can be deployed to uh, multiple hardware vendors. Uh, without any uh, single source uh, that is tied to a specific hardware. So uh, Sickle is mostly motivated by the ISOC++ standards uh, and, and to include uh, or, or to eventually support heterogeneous component into it. And this is still in, in active development and there has been about three revisions in the standards. Uh, and the next one is also in the works, uh, which is target for 2023. So uh, coming into the Sickle space, there are several uh, players here which develop the compilers. Uh, from left to right, uh, you see Intel, which is uh, which I heard in the morning about one API suite of uh, tools, its libraries, and as a part of it, DPC++ compiler is the one that op, uh, that is used for Sickle. Uh, it, it, it's mostly based on the LLVM Clang. Um, and 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 if you see the graph, a dependency graph, you see that it targets mostly Intel uh, CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs. And there is a small fraction of it that is also used for uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs. And and what is not shown here is that AMD GPUs are also now supported to a, a good extent of the features. Uh, and there is uh, there are other players like Codeplay uh, with their specific set of interests, and Xilinx mostly focuses on the FPGAs, uh, and and there is a development uh, uh, of Hepsicl and 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 Neosicl. Uh, they are mostly focusing on on NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPUs. So yeah, there, there are a whole suite of players uh, focusing on different hardware vendors, but the majority of the goal is Sickle uh, is trying to be adopted as a heterogeneous programming model with a single source code uh, that can be that can accelerate multi-core CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs and any other accelerators. So uh, talking about data parallel C++, uh, it is nothing but uh, Kronos Sickle standards with, uh, with a bit of uh, ISO C++. And most importantly, there are community extensions. So any features that the community thinks is important would be added to uh, DPC++, which, uh, which uh, usually gets consumed by the, the Sickle as official standard. So DPC++ is just a combination of these things. Uh, and and it is and more importantly, it is the Intel's implementation of Sickle uh, uh, compiler. Uh, so Intel has released a Sickle Aware compiler, uh, which is packaged and distributed uh, with one API uh, SDK suite. Uh, and and to simply put, one can compile Sickle code with just passing F Sickle as a flag to the Clang uh, plus plus, and and that's pretty much. Uh, so there is no host compiler or the device compiler and tackling two different uh, and two, two different source codes and generating object files and all that business. So and 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 I should focus here that uh, it is portable to other hardware vendors. Uh, the features that support for different hardware vendors is is quite different now, but they are trying to catch up. The DPC plus plus is mostly focused towards Intel for now. And there has been significant improvements uh, in terms of catching up with features for NVIDIA and AMD as well. So DPC++ is an answer to an Opal alternative uh, for any single architecture proprietary languages. Uh, so you just have one language that works on one, uh, one hardware. So uh, DPC++ or Sickle is just an answer to have an open alternative for, for these uh, issues. So in other words, it's, it also allows developers to reuse the code rather than targeting separate for CPU, CPUs or other accelerators. Uh, it just uses the reuse, uh, reusability of the code is the main feature of it. And, and, and one can import more importantly, 
do performance tuning on a very specific accelerator, uh, though it is uh, uh, written for, uh, for a single code base targeting different uh, hardwares. So, uh, and more importantly, uh, how would one write a DPC++ or SQL code uh, if there is no introduction or nothing? Uh, so as I said earlier, that there is a uh, uh, that the compilers are available through one API based toolkit. One can easily migrate an existing CUDA code uh, with 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 something called as Intel's DPC++ compatibility tool. It it mostly translates the CUDA code to a single uh, source file C++ code with SQL extensions in it. Uh, and 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 the usual uh, protocol is you uh, one just takes the CUDA specific files, port it with uh, DPC T, which is the tool to port it to DPC plus plus, and and that's the intermediate step on the right hand side. So uh, as one uh, as you're using some tool, it would have all sort of comments and and its own uh, helper functions and or wrappers, or uh, in other words. One can remove these wrappers to have a clean SQL DPC++ code. It's that simple. And, and, uh, and NWKMEX uh, has used uh, this to particular tool as you have uh, heard from Bert earlier that majority of our development was first started with uh, CUDA and its optimizations. And we could easily use tools such as this to, to port the CUDA programming model uh, to DPC++. Uh, and and it also provides some comments for the developers to to uh, to do hands-on cleaning or hands-on tuning as provided or, or as suggested uh, to be uh, helpful for the cycle. Uh, there is also some pretty good in, uh, IDE integration support where Clips uh, for Windows and Linux, and I'm really not aware of Mac systems. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the usual pro programming. Uh, uh, or porting strategy uh, from if one has a highly optimized CUDA code, and and this is the most simplest and easiest way to port one CUDA code to DPC++. Uh, so uh, just for an instance, we had about five thousand to seven thousand lines of uh, single source CUDA code in NWKMEX, and and that was uh, pretty easily ported to DPC++ uh, within a fraction of a couple of hours. Uh, and and also it was we were able to compile and uh, and generate uh, some uh, numerical number uh, numerical answers from it. So uh, that's uh, how easy it is to convert uh, anything in CUDA. Uh, the, the question is why one would port to SQL or DPC plus uh, plus because uh, there are other programming models and and there are several of them. Uh, so like one has. Oh, one might have used OpenMP or OpenACC, uh, but uh, the, the advantage of IC in SQL is that the, one can explicitly state the parallelism in SQL. Uh, when I say explicitly state uh, the parallelism, one can control how to launch the kernels and when to trigger uh, data transfers, which are not explicitly be controlled via, or not really friendly be controlled via OpenMP or OpenACC. Uh, pragma based uh, approaches and 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 more importantly it's tightly integrated with c++ uh, features so uh, anyone with who, uh, with the codes that have a c++ features like iterators templates lambdas these would readily integrate to sickle and also uh, create a very uh, a highly optimized device code for execution uh, from a from a pr proprietary state of things, uh, there, there is CUDA and you've heard of HIP, which is for the AMD. Uh, SICL is not targeting a specific uh, hardware vendor. It, it is, as I said, is an open standard which can uh, uh, which can readily be uh, 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 execute code on on Intel, Nvidia, and AMD uh, with time. Uh, but it's mostly focused today on on Intel hardware, and and coming to the third, it is it is from a portability framework. As I said, like 
it it can a single source code that would uh, that can run on CPUs, GPUs, and and FPGAs and other hardware accelerators. So that is one of the main uh, catching points here. Uh, and 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 one should not have uh, spend a lot of time importing their existing codes. Uh, that's the ease of adopting SQL. So yeah, these are some of the quick catching points. I I would think why one would not port to SQL. Uh, uh, and this is a standard example of, of I can show that uh, the CUDA versus SQL differences. This is a simple uh, vector addition. On the left, you see a code in written in CUDA, and on the right, you see SQL. Uh, so on the left, uh, I have color coded few sections of the code just to show what are the differences and how they map. So uh, it's you see on the top. You have a kernel, a CUDA kernel, and uh, uh, and you have an int main, which which is the driver. Uh, so one would just create the device arrays. Uh, the, the the standard is pretty straightforward. You would create a device memory, copy the data to the device memory, and launch the kernel off of it. So the the blue here is just creating three vectors of of the size uh, using CUDA malloc. On the right hand side, you just see it is using a malloc device. Uh, so, and there is support for templates here, and we are using it as a specialization. Uh, and this, and here we are using pointers. Uh, SQL, uh, as we as it's been started, it is it was using buffers, which is a specific memory data structure. But uh, with today's standards uh, and standards that were merged from Intel's DPC++ extensions into SQL standards, uh, there is a support for to directly work with uh, pointers to directly allocate pointers. So you see the familiarity of CUDA malloc and malloc device. And, and, and the next step is just usual uh, data transfer business. So uh, you have CUDA malloc, which states the direction from host to device. And on the SQL side, one does not need to uh, mention the direction of the device transfer uh, because it's uh, quite uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so it's, it's quite straightforward with the device transfer and there is a kernel launch, which is the important thing. Uh, as you can see, triple chevrons on the CUDA side of things, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, arguments are usual device pointers in here. So, one stark difference I would state here is the kernel launch is pretty much the same. On the CUDA side of things, one would mention number of blocks and the size of a block. On the right hand, on the SQL side, one would say what's the size of the global iteration space. So. We just have the size of the point uh, size uh, as 10. And we just say that on the left hand side, that's the global iteration space, which is the size. And, on, and the lambda is, 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 is the item. So this is nothing but like a handle to a thread. So we passed in all the three device pointers. And on the sickle side, you see we are acquiring for get global ID. So that is nothing but the thread ID, uh, which in this case is a 1D launch kernel, right? So, uh, and it's it's the, the the heuristics of CUDA, which which develops into blocks, threads, and grids, uh, quite easily translate to SQL, and that's the reason SQL is is very adaptable if one has CUDA. So this is the simple code, and and its and its differences are familiarities with. Uh, with the syntax and the notion between CUDA and SQL. Uh, moving on, um, this is an, uh, a case study with NW Chemex that we have done, uh, and it is uh, uh, and this is a code that we have ported from CUDA straight away to SQL uh, without any optimizations. So whatever optimizations that CUDA had, we just took it and tried to uh, time and see the performance. So. Uh, this is the timings for the triples kernel. And we have some simple three uh, different basis sets uh, for a very small size. Uh, and this was run on a laptop with Intel Gen 9 uh, card. Uh, as you can see uh, with SQL, we could usually, we could readily use Intel Gen 9, which is an integrated GPU on laptops. 
and see about like 16 to 20 X speed up. Uh, and, and, and this just translates to, to the discrete GPU cards that would be available on, on the, the supercomputing architectures in the future. Uh, so uh, as you can see, the most important thing is uh, its performance is about 16 to 20 X compared to one core serial CPU uh, on an integrated gen nine GPU. Uh, and, and, and there's also in, uh, uh, sickle kernel performance increases with the size of the base functions. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and that, that quickly shows how one could quickly port uh, existing CUDA code to sickle and, and, and how the performance is and readily test on existing uh, architectures that is available today and also uh, uh, target for the supercomputing architectures that will be available in the future. And with that, uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, there is one question. Ed is asking, what's the current status of SQL on AMD GPUs? So uh, currently CodePlay is, is the one who is developing uh, the SQL uh, compiler for AMD. They are now working on the tensor core support for uh, AMD. Much of the basic features, uh, uh, launching kernels, reductions, uh, they are all uh, ready and available on, uh, on, on, and has already been tested. Uh, let me call it, let me put it that way. There are a few things that they are working on, which is, as I said, the TensorCore support, which are the MMA operations uh, and uh, subgroups, which are explicit uh, intrinsics for warps in CUDA. So there is no uh, support or stable support for warp intrinsics in, in, on AMD. Uh, on in sickle side, we call it subgroups. So they're still working on that, but majority of the basic features uh, are already supported. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ed, do you have any follow-up questions related